So some folks have been asking me how I set up my flat sessions. Just so happens I was out a few nights ago and I have not done my flats yet. So this was a good opportunity to show you. I have my telescope inside on the desk and I've extended the dew shield all the way out and I've attached a thick white t-shirt to the dew shield with a rubber band and I stretched it tight. I have a flat panel. This is an LED tracing panel that I purchased off of Amazon for between $20 to $25. I've been through several of these. I've been through several of these because of the power connection is kind of flimsy. And what I have found over the generations of me buying these is that they worked better if I created a lip for it to hang off the edge of the telescope. So I bought a couple layers of thick foam core and I cut a circle out of it the size of my dew shield. And there's a bunch of duct tape and gaffer's tape holding it all together and making it kind of look cool and good. And now it just hangs really nicely over the scope. I no longer have to position the scope perpendicular to the ground for the LE panel to balance on top. I can just hang it and not worry about it falling off. Or I bring it in the house and set it on the desktop. Then I power it with my USB hub on the scope. I have it all rigged up in the house, so I power it up with my PowerWorks power supply. Everything here I have running off of Anderson power poles to a distribution center up on top of the scope. I also have a mini PC on top of the scope so everything can run remotely. The LED light has power on it now. so. What I'll do is I'll turn it on to the lowest setting and I'll use that since the other settings are kind of bright and the lower setting tends to work better for me. Now the reason I have to run flats every time is I have a moonlight night crawler. It's a rotator focuser. It rotates my camera to whatever rotation I want to image at. If you'd like more information on the Nightcrawler Focus Rotator, check them out at focuser.com. So this is my scope. I'm going to go log in to the PC via remote desktop and I'll show you how I run my flats. All right, so I am back and I have Sequence Generator Pro opened up and I'm accessing it remotely and it automatically brings up the last session that I have completed and I happen to have about 42 or so images on the three narrowband filters and I took them all at about four minutes each. But right now I need to make the flat images. Okay, so let's go over to our tools bar and let's figure out through the flat calibration wizard what we should be using as our settings. So here we are. We've got a profile selection. We need to choose the profile that we're using. And I have one that I've created based on my telescope, camera, and the night crawler and reducer. And this is my equipment profile. And I say, OK. And it warns me that it's going to shut this sequence down and open up a blank one. And that's OK, because this sequence has been saved. So I say yes. And it always wants to turn off my calibre, the camera cooler. And we're going to reconnect it. OK, so here's all the filters that I have. But right now, we only need to do the sulfur. And I didn't do any binning, so I only need the one. Let's expand the oxygen. I need the one by one of that one. And I need hydrogen alpha, the one by one. So we're going to recalibrate three of our flats. Now the mean target here is 3000 ADU and this is the default with the program. It's worked for me so far so I have just left it be. Now I sometimes have to play with the tolerance level. I sometimes turn this up a few numbers when things don't work out. Minimum exposure is zero seconds. I know all of these are going to be taken at more than zero seconds so I could just put a keep it from going too low. I'll stop it at one second. And I know that these are probably going to be less than 20, so I could put a 20 in there. I can leave it blank, and I will just hit Start. And let's just see where things fall. 
it will start taking images. Let's see if I can get this to close up. There we go. And right now it is setting the HA filter. It's telling me to put the flat box in a position. It's there. And it is taking the first photo at two seconds to see what it looks like. That's not too bad. And, but it had an ADU of 5477, and our goal is closer to 3000. So it's going to take another one, a second photo. Oh, it's going to bump up to 9.10 seconds. That's way too high. Now we're at 12 seconds, at 26. So it's going to teeter between these two numbers. And it's going to get within plus or minus 500. But if it struggles to find it, then I keep an eye on this number as it pops through. It looks like it accepted the hydrogen alpha at 12.33 seconds, and its ADU is 29,927. So that one's done. Now it's working on oxygen. Started at 2 seconds, and it's at 13,374, too light. So it's going to bump up the time. It's not too bad. It's at 27,145 at almost 5 seconds. And that one is about 100, 194 over my tolerance. So it's going to bump it down a little bit. It liked it. So now we're moving on to sulfur. All right, it took its first image. And it's got a mean value of 4,000 series here. So it, that's at 14 seconds. It's going to have to increase that time. And I may have made this maximum exposure of 20 seconds too long, but that's OK. At 17 and a half seconds, we got 25, 2, 4, 4. Close. All right, 17.79, we're at 29.480. Very close. So maybe this next image will do it. <laughs> there you go, and that matches. So three filters. It's come up with the time. The self will be taken at 17.79 seconds. The oxygen will be taken at 4.85 seconds. And hydrogen alpha will be taken at 12.33 seconds. So now that we know how long our images will have to be taken, if we hit save, it will save this data to my equipment profile. And I say OK. And that was it. It knows exactly what I need to do from now on. So I can hit close. All right, let's go back to a sequence here. And I need to find out my focus points for each one of the filters that I need to do and uh, set up the sequence. So I'll be right back. OK, so right now I need to figure out what rotation I took my photos at and what was the focus point. And the reason I need to know my focus point is because I use the autofocuser. It refocuses on every filter. And I have that number programmed into my file name, so it makes it easier for me to find it. Now, if you were on a regular um, focuser that you manually do, hopefully you've only focused it once during the night, and you don't have to worry about messing with that at all. But I, I keep up with the numbers, and I make them all the same. So here's my image session over here. And they're in the light folder. And I start out with my hydrogen alpha was at the beginning of the night. And to break this down, I've got them in a sequence number. My target was the bubble lobster claw. 
They were taken at 240 seconds, hydrogen alpha filter. My focus point was 27825. My rotation was 21.2 degrees, and it was taken at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now this is a lot to keep up with, so I use a program called OneNote. It comes with Microsoft Office, really quite handy, and I create notes on each imaging session. And I have a little table here, and I describe the night that I took on what was my target, what was the weather kind of like, any special conditions. So if I want to repeat something or I know what didn't work, I can go back and read these notes. And this evening I took images from 8.38 p.m. to 5.59 a.m. My camera about where I was located in my yard. And I have this note here about I have a bubble mount on my mount and I tend to level everything using the bubble mount on the mount, even though I know that it doesn't match if I was to level my tripod with a bubble mount. They're slightly different, but it seems to be regardless of which level I use, they both work. So you just kind of pick whichever one's easier for you. And here's my session here. I took 42 images, 240 seconds, my focus point, my rotation, my temperature. And as I go through my flats, then I'll mark over here when I took flats. And then after when it's time for me to go through and approve things with pics in sight, if I've had a really bad night, sometimes I'll go through and say, oh, 42 images, only 10 were approved. It's normal. It's okay. It happens to all of us. So now that I know this information, I will close this out a little bit and I need to set up my flats. Now let's give it a target name. Click on the little gear here, and I'm just going to call it bubble flat and say OK. And I am going to take some flats. So I change it over here to flat. Let's start with our hydrogen alpha. And it remembered the 12.33 seconds, and I'm taking about 40 images. And I'll do flat. We'll go to oxygen. And it remembered its time, and we'll do flat sulfur. Okay, so now what I need to do, let's uh, shrink this up since the other one pops behind it. Okay, my hydrogen alpha was taken at 27,825. So let's rearrange these so I can see some things. My focus point, I hit go to, and I type in 27825, and that's where my, my focuser is going to move to. And my current position on my rotator is still the same as it took the photo, so I don't have to worry about that. But let's think about oxygen. I will set up this little event pause, and I'll say pause the sequence before you start doing the oxygen. And I want to change my focus point to 26102. This is just to remind me, so I don't have to keep this guy open. I say OK. And the flat for the sulfur, I want to pause it before and change it to 26040. 26040. OK. So we can minimize this now and make this guy bigger. Okay, so my focus is set for the hydrogen alpha. It's at the correct rotation. I'm going to take three filters worth of flats and I'm going to pause between each one just so I can manually change my focus point. All I have to do now, oh, let's check the directory we're dropping these in. Okay. It is going underneath this project here, which is where I took my original subs. And all I have to do is hit run. And we'll come back after it's done running the hydrogen alpha. This whole process is going to take me, right now it says about an hour and 13 minutes to occur. So just real quick, I wanted to show you that my scope PC is running right now. And I've connected a monitor to it just so you could see that it was operating but I am not doing things in here. I am in the living room working remotely. 
So this is my desk area, which is using the remote desktop protocol to look into the PC on the telescope. So you can see what's going on in there. And on the other monitor, you can see I'm actually recording what I'm about to share with you all. So this is my setup I'm in the living room where I can spend quality time with the family. And the scope is hiding in the office. All right, here's one of my hydrogen alpha flats as they're coming through, just so you can see what they're gonna look at. And you can see I've got my little dust spots here. And there's a big one right here that I need to, uh, at some point, address this and probably clean it up. But again, it doesn't show up on my images, so I'm not overly concerned. All right, I'll be back when the hydrogen alpha are done. So our hydrogen alpha are done running, and it's telling me to go to the next focus point. That's what we had programmed in there of 26102. So I'm going to say OK. And then right here, it's wanting to cancel my session. I need to uncheck run end session and dismiss. So we need to go over here to our focus point and change it to 26102 and say OK. And notice that it's, it's moving the focuser in and out now. And it's now at 26102. And I continue on with the next image. It is setting the oxygen filter. In just a moment, it's going to take the first oxygen flat. We'll take a look at that, and then I'll pause this until it's time to come back and do the sulfur. It says I have about 48 minutes left. So every morning after an image session, I typically will take my flats, and it takes about an hour to do, but I set it all up, and then I walk away. All right, there's my first image. I've got the dust bunnies here, and I've got that big spot. No big deal. Okay, so that's it. I'll come back when those are done running. Well, the oxygen flew by pretty quick, but of course they were only taken at 4.85 seconds. So my sulfur is next, and the focus point I need to move to is 26040. So let's do that. Go to 26040. Watch it change. It's good. And we resume. It is now setting the sulfur filter. And these are going to take quite a bit longer because they're taken at 17.78 seconds a piece. But it says I have about 28 minutes left in the sequence. And that's just a really good guesstimate. Take in the first image, seven seconds left. Let's see what it looks like. And there it is. Same dust spots, not too bad. But that's how I run a flat session. And uh, once these are all done, taking, I will move them over to a little USB drive and bring them to my main PC and start my editing process. I hope this was helpful for you in showing you how I do create my, uh, my flats. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them. I will be happy to answer them. Uh, if you have a question that, re that involves a video, don't worry, I'll make you a video too. So till next time, this is Amy with Amy Astro and Clear Skies.